Is it? You know that your your family is important to you when your daughter yeah. calls you last week and says, you know, we want to bring our two kids and three dogs down and spend a week with you during our spring break. Uh, really? We've <laughs> <laughs> been entertaining and we just got back from you know, we all just got back from the pancake house, so I'm passing my lunch today. But, uh, more last week, yeah. But. this meeting to order. Okay, Hal will do invocation. 
okay. Heavenly Father, it is so much of a blessing that we're all back together again. We want to thank you for everybody here that was able to get their vaccinations and the challenges they had to do to get there. We thank you for the members that never got COVID. We put a special blessing on those that we knew had to experience COVID. We ask that you continue to heal them and bring them back so they can join us. Thank you for the kettle corn purchasers because they all seem so happy that the Pioneer Lions are back. We would ask that you would bless this meeting and the food to our bodies. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, Harold Malone, our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Marilyn Patterson will do our song. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Terry, any any guests today? Skip, that's your birthday. I think they just. Can I have the other mic? I don't think this one's not working. That one's not working. Terry. Is there any other any guests today? No. All right, thank you. Uh, okay, a couple of announcements. I would like first to uh, say hello to Terry Smith, who has been inducted in, into our lines. First time she's been to our meeting in person instead of Zoom. Hey. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, uh, Bob, anything on concessions? Just talk about Bob. Put a half of my mic is on one mic. Greg stole the other mic. Is that right? Darlene, fellow members, the guests, uh, had another fantastic Friday at Safeway. That was the fourth, fourth one we had. For the second half of the day this coming Friday, so uh, you can talk to all of us before we leave and see if there's an no opening you want to put your name down or you can go online and do uh, James' sign up sheets. So, uh, any questions about the middle corn? I think we're getting it down pretty good. We're Anything on membership? No. Okay, thank you. Uh, tonight there is a zone meeting. I think it's at 7 o'clock on Zoom. The ones that have to be there. Skip. Well, then, Darlene, uh, after the meeting, we'd like to have the members of the Spirits of Long Group that are here for about five minutes to put the sidebar over there. Okay. Okay, uh, anything on Sunshine that anybody knows about? Any Sunshine report, anybody? Okay, good. Okay, Leroy, would you like to come up and talk about uh, 
nominations for next year's officers. President Darlene Bell Lyons and guests. Last Tuesday, I don't know if you can hear me. Last Tuesday, we had the past presidents held our meeting to uh, go over nominations for officers for the 21 22 year. And so um, I'm going to read off uh, the nominations that we have so far. I'm going to start off with Lion Tamer, um, Marge Wicken, and um, Sharon Nolan. Yahoo! So um, we have we do have one position open. Tail Twister, Reed Skinner, Steve House, and Pat Palmer. Ooh. <laughs> not even here. Not even here. Well, no, not them are here. Um, one year director. We will have Craig Churchill, Gail Bradley, and Doug Harvey. Ooh. Have been nominated. Two year directors. Nominations were Steve Patterson, Louis Fickett, and myself, Leroy Parcel. Yay! Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> immediate, immediate past president will be Darlene. What? Yeah. Boo! Boo. 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 Another Pre year. President Tom Fulton. Yay! First VP, Floyd. Yeah. <laughs> and second VP, Cheryl Coast. Third, third, so we're back, back to have Cheryl come on board. The third VP is, position is open. <laughs> With that list, are there any nominations from the floor? Mr. Steve Patterson. Fellow Lions board members, I'd like to nominate Isla Schuster, Schuster or Ta uh, Lion Tamer. Oh. Do we need to vote? Okay. Uh, no. Wait a minute. She's got a hand. Isla? Isla. 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 We have Viola as nominated for the uh, third position for. I'm not saying because I didn't hear it. <laughs> anyway, so we, we will go over this nomination again, read it next week. And so thank you very much. We need, we need to say that. All right. We have to uh, do this for three weeks in a row, then we will vote on the third weeks after. Uh, we go through the nominations again. Uh, okay, Doug Harvey. Thank you, President Darlene. Do I need this? Yes, I Thank you, President Darlene. Fellow lines and yes. Just to remind everybody that our spring conference is coming up on May 7th and 8th, it's Friday and Saturday. Now, the neat thing about it is that we're going to have a Zoom on Friday. We've got a lot of international people coming and a lot of people from the region. Okay? But Saturday is for us. And it's going to be an open event at Camel Shanter Park. We're going to have a lot of awards there, presentations. We're also going to have hamburgers, hot dogs, and a lot of fun. Somebody even said something about bringing a cornhole event, whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the nice thing about it, it is free. So you can even come and eat free. I mean, how can you turn that down? And guess what you're probably going to get? Lion's hamburgers. Well, what the heck? It's not going to be a lot of fun. So, put it down. May 7th and 8th. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Gary Hill. President Darlene, I'm a lion. Yes. Last week I was able to take some orders for Lion's apparel and deliver those.
All right. Any other announcements? Okay. I will introduce our guest speaker today is Jen Wills from Park and Rack, and she'll talk about different programs that are going to be taking place.
find some, you know, whether it's activity, mental solace, parks are there for, for their essential infrastructure for the city of Longview. So real quick by the numbers, the lake is not the only park that we have. <laughs> no, we have 18 parks. Um, and so 645 acres that we maintain in park land, uh, 24 medians, so anything from Broadway to um, Tenant Way to uh, Beach Street, the city uh, parks department maintains those. We have nine and a half miles of trails, seven total trails, and then shoreline access and surface water. 23 playgrounds, 20 picnic shelters, outdoor uh, uh, basketball, pickleball, and we'll get into the basketball court here shortly. Um, community gardens, disc golf courses, so we maintain a lot of those activities that are free for people to use. And we do that with 11 full-time staff um, and a budget of $1.8 million. So monthly per citizen is about $3.90 a month to be able to have these um, amenities for our community. And we have three certified playground inspectors on staff as well as three uh, staff with CDL for our equipment. So these pictures are a little hard to see, but if you've been by the lake lately, you've seen Harley's Hoops. Um, it's a covered, lit basketball court that is used from morning, noon, until night. Um, all ages, free and open to the public. Harley's Angels, if you know anything about the Disarmo family, um, they lost their daughter, they're from Castle Rock. She came to the Elks Building, which is where our teen center is, and she just wanted to do something. She's like, what can I do? What can I provide you? What can I give you? And they were like, well, we need underwear and notebooks. <laughs> and it broke her heart. She's like, that's what you want? You want underwear and notebooks. So she ran to Walmart, picked up a bunch of underwear and notebooks, brought it back, and said, here, this is what, what do you guys want? I don't know. I mean, if I can do your basic needs, what do you want? And they said, a covered basketball court. And she goes, that's a little more than I thought you were asking for. <laughs> <laughs> so she decided, OK, I don't, this is a really big, audacious goal, but if this is what the kids want, I'm going to figure it out. So that was four years ago. So she went to the 100 Women Who Care, she went to J.H. Kelly, she went to everyone and anyone um, that was willing to help out. And somehow, this amazing woman with her story and her passion, it took four years, there were city council meetings, historic preservation, boards of adjustments and appeals, all of the bells and hoops and whistles that we asked for her to do ended up raising $270,000 to be able to donate this to the city free for, for uh, the kids and families to use. And so this is our project of the year. Um, she couldn't have done it without the amazing support of the community. Um, and she is an amazing woman, and she's on to her next project, working with Core Health to put in a fitness center at their new facility. So she is she's a, a community angel. Um, some of the other big projects during the pandemic that we were able to accomplish, um, <coughs> the Japanese Island Tour Gate uh, was uh, brought in at the beginning of put in straight to the ground. Wood and dirt in the Pacific Northwest never work out really well. Um, and so now it has a concrete, yeah, weird. Uh, has a concrete structure um, footing, so to be able to, and, and it was replaced, so back to its natural state, and so it's open and ready and available. And then Victoria Freeman Playground was put in last year, and we'll be putting in our next playground within the next few months at Colony Park, which is next to the skate park. By the skate park, I thought it was uh, yep, the skate park that used to be like tennis, and then there's a little BMX. So, we're, and we're working on trying to do a nature, a mix of the nature playground. We're going to try to work potentially with warehousers to do some kind of fun, different stuff. The innovations of playgrounds, from what they used to be, those big, really hot metal slides that burn in the middle of the summer, compared to what we can do now, is, is impressive. Um, and so, we talked about this a little bit, but the benefits of the parks during the pandemic: mental health and stress management physical activity, healthy immune system, disease transmission, social cohesion. I don't know if you went out throughout the last summer and fall, but you would see people with their, their chairs six feet apart sitting around having picnic, uh, picnics. Uh, I saw people playing music, things that we don't normally see, people who are coming out, laying out, just just getting sunshine and being outdoors. And so Lake Sacramento and all of our parks saw an increased use. What was beautiful too is with that increased use, we didn't see, we saw less vandalism, um, because when you have positive use in a park, it negates the negative use, so you have more eyes, more people using it for the correct reason. Um, and then people were picking up their trash. Usually if you have an increase of people, we have an increase of trash, um, at least ground garbage, and people were picking it up. And so as far as the impact on our staff, it was fairly minimal, um, and then it was just great to see everybody outside. So urban forestry is also under the City of Long Beach Parks and Rec Department, so any tree that is in a park, for any tree that is between a sidewalk and a curb, we maintain. We have 
about 14,000 trees throughout the entire park uh, with four people. Um, and so we try to
Um, $44,000 were still raised in grants and sponsorships. Many of those uh, special events we did have were fully sponsored by our local businesses. And then we'll talk about 16 weeks of our distance learning camp. We actually hosted a camp, and, and it's just finishing now, where parents could drop their kids off, and we would work with them from 8 a.m. till 3 p.m., doing their classes with the kids, and then in the afternoon we would run around with the kids. And so for those parents that worked here locally, um, we were able to provide that opportunity. We would work with the school, uh, school district, work with their teachers, and we were able to help promote their learning. And most of the children that were in our program were in top of their class because they, we ensured that they were sitting in front of the class. We ensured that their uh, assignments were put, put in. And we had kids from Bridgefield from Battlegrounds. None of them had the same schedules, and we had to learn how to do all of it because their parents worked here locally. Um, so, yep, talking about just our virtual classes and events, um, we are now swinging back, and we'll talk to 2021, but we're now swinging back into actual in-person classes. And what's been nice is people want it. We opened up two, uh, I think when we first started in phase two, we could have um, small classes of up to six people and an instructor. So we opened up two for kiddie soccer and we ended up with 11 classes because we had that many kids and that many families who wanted to have their kids involved. Um, and so right now we are getting geared up for a softball league, things that we are able to do within the phasing. We are trying to do our best to plan ahead so when things are able and ready to come open, we are ready to jump. Um, so we are planning for concerts and those types of things, so we're hoping that that's going to be an option going forward in the future. Um, nothing set in stone yet for those large gatherings. I think right now upwards of like 50 people can gather outdoors, and they're working at like 500, which is nothing to touch on a concert or nothing to touch on go for. Um, but as we work towards that, we will, we will be sure to try to make sure those events happen. So I know I talked really fast and really excited about Parks and Rec, but I would love to answer any questions that you might have or anything that you uh, want to know for the future or anything as far as our partnership with Parks and Recreation and the Lions. Uh, yeah, two things. Number one, uh, your group done a tremendous job cleaning up Lions Island. <laughs> I just noticed that the south end of the island is all cleaned up. It looks very, very nice. Second of all, are we going to have concerts? Yeah. Hoping so. Um, so working, um, I'm on the legislative committee with the state of Washington for Washington State Parks and Recreation Association. And what we are trying to do is figure out how to maybe have large events. And so maybe we would do a concert at four and a concert at six, and then have three sessions for the lake that you could get a free ticket for. Um, because if it's 500 per square square city, I can do 500 on per square city. Um, and then if we did a 4 o'clock and we did that again at 6 o'clock, it might be a possibility. And so we are going to try to work with whatever version that looks like, um, and knowing that whatever that looks like, we're trying to figure that out. So that is the goal, and we are planning for it. We are looking at more local talent, because obviously it's expensive to bring in the bigger names, and if they're local and it's last minute and we're allowed to do it, we'll have them in, and so we're looking at more of a, a local year as far as our concerts go, but that's where we're at right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which do you want to discuss first? <laughs> so what would you like to discuss first? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Most people just bring them to the light. Maybe get bunnies and swans right after Easter. <laughs>
we drop them at the lake, then we drop them. Because right now we're working on a beaver. There's a beaver off of... Um, yeah, I got the other one. And he's wily, and we only have till the end of the month, because there's a trapping season. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, the kid went at the casino. I think so. Okay. So, here's your number So, that, well, we had, last year was there about 12 or 15 coyotes on the golf course. Yep. Oh, my goodness. And that's when we had the yeah, outside. Yeah, it was exciting because they just run up to your car and kind of look at it and you're like, well, that was seven iron group that could never get. <laughs> <laughs> Coming back to one of your screens earlier, this 13% increase in revenue. Dan, does it matter? Okay, we're in phase three. It, as long as we're in phase three, all this like contest at the lake and all that will go on. Phase four. Well, phase I don't know four. What they're calling it phase four. Right now, okay. outdoor gathering um, outside of your household is 50 people. Okay. Um, and so we are hosting our live uh, Arbor Day tree planting next Tuesday uh, in R.I. Long Park, which will be one of our first real events that is open to the public. Okay. Um, but until we're out of this phase, okay. uh, we're not there yet. Okay. And then the fish call is coming. Yeah. Fish call is coming, yep. um, but it's done 50 people every hour. Oh, okay. um, and so we're trying to call, okay. and it's much longer than normal. So I think it's an 8 to have 4, which usually it's an 8 to 2 or 8 to 1. Okay. It's shorter, um, it's longer, so it has to be stretched out. Because the article in the paper this morning said they're talking on the 12th, they will decide if we go back to phase 2. Yes. And then uh, that Friday, we go back to phase two. I, mean, I guess we're really close as a county. I'm not sure how they do the numbers, but it's like, how can we be that? Yeah. <laughs> you know. well, and, and we follow that. Um, that's kind of what has been our whole, yeah. we're, we're on the governor's website on a regular basis trying to make sure and see what that looks like. So, so do you have, you, you did the fourth too? Or is you, is no, so we just partner with the Go Forth Association. Okay. Um, so that's Arlene Hubble. Okay. Um, and so we go to her meetings every other Friday. So, oh, okay. But they're not there yet. But I know that Squirrel Fest is still doing planning, Go for the still planning, um, and so those things okay. are still trying to happen. Okay. Because um, no one wants to be flat footed. Right, the right, right, go. right. Um, I have a feeling that Go for is going to look a little different. 
Great. Right. I just wonder how you can do the people when they it's all open. You know how you, how can you control the number of people you're supposed to be able to have? I think that's the question. They yeah. Draw circles and boxes. I've seen it on the on Facebook around the world. Well, and we have we had one minor misstep, um, but no fallout. But we did try to host a trick or treat at the lake. I don't know if anybody saw that. Oh. But like five thousand people showed up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We didn't do yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but it was outdoors, and we seem to have had uh, no fallout from it. So. Okay. What? That's a 7th and 8th, I believe it's a spring conference, so you can sign up. And if you want any gear, uh, Lions gear, uh, talk to Gary Hill. You, today is also supposedly Spirit Day for Lions. Uh, some have Lions. We, I don't. Uh, uh, we'll kind of give you a break this month because it's kind of, you know, without a year ago that, <laughs> that we kind of started. So this is only our second one. So, okay, so let's do drawings. Okay, orange ticket, 9267-48. All right, Marilyn. <laughs> okay, orange, orange ticket is for white cane. Okay. Uh, White ticket. 50, 50. Four, seven, right two, one, eight, seven. Boom. Oh. All right. Bob Piper. Okay, uh, Jane desserts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what is your favorite? Mike Park. 
All right. So share it to Mike Parker. I don't know how much is how much is the Joker worth? Eleven hundred, twelve hundred. Uh, one thousand four hundred and sixteen dollars. Okay, and fifty cents. Uh, all right. Next week it'll be a little bit higher. All right. Are there any Are there any more announcements? Oh, membership cards. If you did not get yours last week, you can stop by, and Dolly will have yours. Okay, anything else? I will adjourn this meeting.